In 2002, China started a huge project with an estimated investment of 500 billion yuan. It is estimated that it will take at least 40 years to complete this project. What kind of project made China invest so much time and money to build it? Well, this is the South to North water diversion to solve the water problem of northern Chinese. Up to now, it has been under construction for 20 years and cost 250 billion yuan, however, it has not been completed. So, when will it be completed? How great is it? Despite this, the project has already solved the water problem of hundreds of millions of people before it is completed. In fact, it is very difficult to build a waterway that spans more than 1,000 kilometers. There are countless issues related to people relocation, blowing up mountains, environment pollution, and so on. As a result, human engineering marvels and, of course, touching stories are everywhere along China's South to North Water Diversion Project. Hi, welcome to Hot Topics Time. In today's video, let's take a closer look to China's greatest project, the South to North Water Diversion Project. First of all, what we need to figure out is why China is building the South to North Water Diversion Project. Many people may think that earthquakes and tsunamis cause the most casualties, but according to United Nations statistics, floods and droughts are the natural disasters that occur most frequently and cause the most number of deaths. Due to China's geographical environment, the distribution of water resources is very uneven. Most of China's water resources are distributed in the south, and the north is relatively short of water. There are floods in the south year after year, while in the north there are severe droughts every year. In terms of per capita water volume, the most thirsty places in China are the industrially developed Beijing, Tianjin, Hebei, and other places. The extreme water shortage line in international standards is 500 per capita, and here it is less than 150. Water shortages have occurred in so many provinces and municipalities, severely limiting China's economic development. China urgently needs a project that can solve these problems, so, the South to North water diversion was put on the schedule. In the autumn of 1952, President Mao Zedong went to the Yellow River for inspection. Looking at the surging water, he suddenly had a bold idea. That is, there is more water in the south and less water in the north. It would be nice if they could borrow water from the south to balance the shortage of water in the north. This is the first proposal of the South to North Water Diversion Project. After President Mao's proposal, countless experts throughout China spent their whole lives to demonstrate and design, and it was not officially started until the end of 2002. It took 50 years to prepare, and until 2020, only the eastern and central lines were put into use. In other words, this is a great project that has spanned half a century and may even last a century. Now, let's talk about the Eastern Line project. To briefly summarize, it is a line that the water flows to high places. This line is 1,785 kilometers long, and the end point is more than 40 meters higher than the starting point, that is, the water has to flow to a high place. 160 giant water pumps in 13 stages were built along the way to pump these precious freshwater resources to the northern China. But the central line project is only one pump station, and all the water will be transported to 1,432 kilometers away. How is that possible? This is inseparable from a great dam, the Danjianku Dam. It may not be as famous as the Three Gorges Dam but its significance is by no means inferior to the Three Gorges. In 2012, the Danjianku Dam was raised to 176.6 meters, raising its water level to 170 meters. Its final water level is more than 100 meters higher than the end point in Beijing, so it hardly needs any pumps. The water here can go all the way north to Beijing. 
However, the biggest problem faced by such automatic water transportation by water level difference is that the existing waterway cannot be used. In other words, more than 1,400 kilometers of waterways need to be rebuilt. It is in this great project of changing the world that the Chinese have created countless miracles. For example, in order to pass through the Yellow River, the underpass tunnel built is 50.5 meters deep and 16.4 meters in inner diameter. A 16-story building can be placed in it, and the shield machine has been drilling for more than 500 days. These incredible projects are only part of the south-to-north water diversion. In fact, as the drinking water is transferred, the water quality has become a crucial part. In order to ensure that the water still maintains high quality after it has crossed more than 1,400 kilometers, almost all the high-polluting enterprises around the water source have been shut down. More than 100 sewage treatment plants and 100 waste treatment plants have been established. In addition, because the water level of Danjianku Reservoir has risen, more than 340,000 residents nearby have to leave the land where they have grown up for generations and relocate to all parts of the country. In fact, these local residents began to relocate as early as 1958. This year is also known as the first year of the South to North Water Diversion Project. In a village in Hunan, there is a monument composed of 56 stone tablets, which records the process of people's migration at that time. There are about 165,400 local residents' names on it. These 10 towns used to be their hometowns where their ancestors lived from generation to generation, but because of the water diversion project, their hometowns no longer exist. The existence of historical monuments is to allow these people to have a place to commemorate again. Even if the ancestral land has sunk to the river, the names on the monument will always be remembered. Now, how is the progress of the South to North Water Diversion Project? According to what has been done so far, everything is going well. The construction of the Western Line has not yet started. Due to the extremely high difficulty of construction, it is still in the process of planning. In addition to this, the Eastern Line and the Central Line are all in stable operation. On November 15, 2013, the first phase of the Eastern Line project was officially opened, and it can draw up to 8.8 .8 billion cubic meters of water within a year. On December 12, 2014, the Central Line project was officially opened. By 2020, water has been transported for more than 2,000 days, reaching as much as 30 billion cubic meters, benefiting hundreds of millions of people along the way. 70% of the water needs of the urban agglomerations around Beijing have been solved, and the local people have said goodbye to bitter alkaline water and felt the sweetness of clean water. Besides, it has also played a huge role in waterway transportation. China has specially widened the waterway, increased the number of cargo ships and cargo volume, and further improved the transport capacity. The construction of water conservancy projects can also promote the employment of social personnel, adding hundreds of thousands of jobs. In addition, the South to North Water Diversion Project has greatly improved the ecology of rivers and lakes along the line. After the water was opened, fish that had been extinct for many years reappeared, and a rare peach jellyfish was also found. Besides, the number of birds living here has increased significantly, and rare birds have appeared, allowing countless creatures to inhabit and providing a place for them to live. Okay, that's all for today. Hot Topics Time, time to explore the wisdom behind the news, we will see you in the next video.